Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching Wasabi Aquarium channel. Today, I will talk about how to create a cool planted aquarium, Composition Edition Part 1. This video is for viewers who want to create a cool planted aquarium. This video is for viewers who want to create a cool aquarium layout. It is also for people who created their own layout before but just couldn't get it right. If you are looking for tips and points to creating a layout design, this video is also for you. I think this video is going to be quite useful for people for, with the thoughts above. So what exactly is a cool aquarium layout as in the title? Cool is a vague word, and people have their own preferences and taste. This is actually quite simple. If you practice the three steps, just three steps that I'm going to talk about, Anyone can create an aesthetically pleasing layout design. It will make us happy if you watch this video until the end. An explanation only with words will be hard to understand, so I will be using the actual planted aquariums at our shops as an example. I hope I can create an easy to understand visual and explain on how to create a cool layout. Moving right in, I will talk about the three points in order. To make it easier to digest, I will be talking about them as three distinct points. Just by creating three distinct points in their layout, anyone can create a cool aquarium visual. The first point is making the composition distinct. The second point is making whether it is close range view or far range view distinct. The third point is making the layout material distinct. If you practice these three distinction points, you can create an extremely aesthetically pleasing visual. Anyone who sees it will instantly think it's cool, and you will be able to create a layout with an impact. So I will talk about these three points in detail. Making the composition clear. This is extremely important. This is the complete basic of design. What I mean by this is that there are only three types of layout compositions. The first is the layout composition, the next is the convex com composition, the third is the concave composition. So the most important part is choosing which part of the three compositions you are going to create when starting out a planetarium. For detailed explanations on compositions, I have talked about them in previous videos, so I hope you watch those videos. There are links down below in the description box, so it might be easier to understand if you watch them first. Some viewers watching this video right now might have heard of compositions before, but might not have a clear idea on what each composition looks like. So I will show you an actual example using the planted aquariums in our shop. So I will talk about the actual cases. The first is the triangle layout. If you look at this aquarium, I think it is quite easy to see. Some parts of the material is hidden behind the plants, so the outline is hard to see. But you can see that the trimming line creates a triangle composition. As you can see, the middle of the bushes are a little bit in the far right end. The trimming line falls down towards the left side as so. The far left side has a triangle shaped space open. This type of composition is a triangle composition. You can leave a little bit more space, but since the rotalas are growing in the outer rim is fuzzy. However, if you look at this as a space, you can instantly tell that it is an impairing composition. This layout aquarium goes down from the right to left, but there is no issue creating an opposite pattern. You can create a bush on the far left side and create a space in the far right side. There is no issue in a form like this. A triangle layout is extremely easy to find balance, so if you are trying out a planted aquarium for the first time, I think it is easier to create. However, you do have to prepare a dynamic main focal stone or a dynamic enlarged driftwood. I will talk about this in the following points number 2 and 3. The next aquarium here has the convex composition. The layout materials and the bushes of the plants are sitting in the middle, and the far right and far left sides are open space. This is the convex composition. This composition has an extremely imposing and stable impression. The last composition is here. This is the concave composition. This composition has an open space in the center area 
and positions the driftwood and stones and plants in the right and left sides. It is extremely easy to create. This composition has the best visual at first glance and is the easiest to create. So, I have shown you the visuals like so, and I think if you see the finished product, it is easy to understand. I think the three compositions I showed you were instantly apparent at first glance. So, when creating the composition, it is important to think about it and make the composition clear and apparent. When the composition becomes blurry and unclear, create a distinct space with the trimming line. When the space is unclear, it is hard to tell the composition. Even with this aquarium, if the triangle space in the center is filled, it becomes hard to tell what composition it is. This aquarium is bushy, so the space is relatively small, but just think about the space when creating a composition. This is the important part. Next, I will show you a close range view and far range view layout design. This is the same aquarium as the previous one I've shown you, and this is a 90cm aquarium convex layout. I wonder if you can tell by first glance. It does not have an impression of an extremely far range view. Rather, it is more of a waterscape spread right in front of your eyes. I was conscious of this point in the creation process. So, in terms of perspective, this aquarium has none of it. This aquarium focuses on creating the waterscape right in front of the eyes, so perspective is not created. If you want to create a dynamic layout, I think a close range view would do. I think a close range view waterscape is relatively closer to what actual nature looks like. The farther and farther it becomes, the more di diorama-like and closer to land scenery it becomes. This aspect is up to your preference, so please think about what you want to create, a close range waterscape or a far range waterscape. The next one I am showing you is this. This is a far range view scenery. This waterscape recreates a far range scenery. This might seem like a completely different aquarium from the 90cm one I've previously shown. This aquarium really recreates ridges and sceneries of a mountain out to be far away. This is more of a diorama style, but when recreating a far range scenery, it will turn out to be something like this. This tip is for advanced viewers, but if you incorporate both close range view taste and far range view taste, you can create a layout with depth. So I will talk about this in another opportunity. Combinations are difficult, so I hope beginners gain verbal knowledge first. If you think about whether creating a close range view or a far range view and make it distinct, you can create a better layout design. I hope you take this point in consideration. The next is the third point, making the layout materials clear. This point is as important as the first point. Many beginners to intermediate viewers don't take this point into consideration and miss out on creating a cool design. This point needs serious attention. The first point is the size range of the driftwood and stones. If you don't succeed in this point, it will become a very vague waterscape. Whether it is foreground plants or middle ground plants or background plants, as long as they are alive, they will keep on growing. They will gradually hide away the layout materials like driftwood and stones. So the positive point at first becomes more and more negative. The plants will erase the outline and they will lose their presence, becoming more negative. Take this point into consideration beforehand and calculating when creating is the important part. So, if you put your layout materials and stones in an empty aquarium and think it is perfect at first, it will not go as you expected as the plants grow on. A situation where the coolness at first dissipates and the presence thinning out will occur. So, you might think the driftwood is too strong at first when you put it inside an empty aquarium. But actually, this will gradually blend in and become better. 
If you've created an aquarium layout many times, you can tell this feeling and instinct. However, if it is your first time, I think it is hard to grasp the size range. So for advice and art design proposals, we have Wasabi Reserve Service and Wasabi Green Net Service. If you have questions on layout design, please use this service. There is an explanation on the service in the description box below, so please check it out if you are interested. The topic got a bit off track, but the selection of layout materials really is important. Not only is the size range important, but the amount of number of the stones and driftwood differentiate the impression of the layout design. I hope you pay attention to this point. If you are curious about the actual size range and selection tips of the layout materials, we have videos that we created before in the description box below, so I hope you check it out. How did you like this video? I've discussed about the three tips on creating a cool planted aquarium. By making the three points distinct, anyone can create a layout that radiates a cool impression at first glance. I hope you take these points into consideration if you are starting off a layout design or resetting and creating a brand new layout. This video was the first installment. I hope to talk about selecting plants and creating a cool planted aquarium and what types to plant in the coming videos. Cool composition, cool plants, and planting. When these aspects are combined, a truly amazing piece will be created. I hope you are excited for the next second video as well. Many people think too hard or grasp it to be too complex about layout designs. I've explained the distinct points in a very simple manner, but this is actually the basis of the basis. By thinking about these points, I think you can create a very good layout. The Wasabi Aquarium channel will keep creating videos to give advice and make your planted aquarium layouts even cooler and more beautiful. So I hope you keep on watching our videos. If you have any questions on layout designs introduced or points you would like an explanation on, please ask us from the comment section down below. We won't be able to individually respond to every comment that we receive, but when similar questions appear frequently, we will answer in a different YouTube video. If this video happened to be useful, I hope you subscribe to our Wasabi Aquarium channel. A like will make us happy and cheer us on. We will end this video here. Thank you for watching.